I actually ended up consulting a friend of mine who's a Catholic priest about this, to which he responded, finders keepers. <laughs>So in my line of work repairing vintage Mercedes, sometimes I end up damaging parts and so I was rebuilding the steering box in a 300 SEL 6.3 and I ended up damaging it. Meanwhile, my girlfriend had located through a, just a post on, on Facebook or something, a pair of Mercedes that were delivered to a wrecking yard near me. And so this is a real travesty. I mean, I would love to sit down and tell stories of these cars getting rescued. So it was like horrifying for me to see these two beautiful cars, a 280 SE 4.5 and a 300 SEL 4.5, both 1972 in a wrecking yard, especially when they looked fairly complete. Now, they weren't as complete as I thought. By the time I got there, I could tell that some assholes had cannibalized what would have probably been two restorable cars, but I had gotten to the point where I was so desperate for a steering box, I said, okay, I'm just gonna remove this steering box. It doesn't involve cutting up the car or anything. I'm just going to take the steering box out, take it back to my shop, and then deal with rebuilding it. I have this helper, or I had this helper named Dean Snyder. And Dean, Dean was not really a very well-adjusted guy. He was from what Chief Keefe calls Sosa, or the south side of Chicago. He could not say a sentence without dropping an F-bomb. And he had a very hard time explaining himself because instead of speaking slowly and coherently, who would just kind of talk like this, like he was sort of on his way through everything, you know what I'm saying? It's like a Chicago version of Boonhauer from uh, King of the Hill. He had this, this just awful disposition of getting in trouble. And so I said, you know, on a day like today, I have a bad feeling about leaving him at the shop. So we'll, I'm just going to bring him to the wrecking yard with me. And maybe a car will fall on him and I can just, he wouldn't die, but I'd just sort of leave him there by accident. So we go into the wrecking yard, we finish pulling the steering box. We test drove a customer's car out there, 1984 Mercedes 190D 2.2, fabulously reliable, but also extremely slow. And this thing was just fresh out of somebody's backyard. So we'd gotten it running and we're, we're driving it to see if it has any major problems. and. As you can expect, we didn't have a valid license plate on it either. <laughs> so that was doubly stupid of us. We go to the wrecking yard and, and Dean says, Hey, we should, uh, AP, we should look at the of this car. You know, so let me something interesting in there. You know, and let me translate that for you. Hey, P, we should look in the trunk of this car. There might be something interesting in here. So I grabbed a, a little pry bar and I fiddled with it. And I got the trunk popped. Inside the trunk, I saw a bunch of stuff, and I was like, I don't know what this is. I'll just let Dean look at it. I'll keep him busy. So I'm getting a couple other little items that I need, and Dean goes, he, Dean calls me, and he goes, hey, hey, you know, and when he says it like that, I know that he's excited. So I crawl up over two cars to the top of the stack and look in the trunk, and there are all these purple boxes, and there are a couple of vinyl bags that are long that look like you would store a gun in. So I start looking at the purple boxes and I open them and I go, huh, that's funny. I don't know what these are, but they look kind of valuable. And it turns out that they were silver eagles and there were 40 of them all with their certificates in the trunk. There were also three shotguns and six boxes of ammunition and one virgin never used Mercedes-Benz Bosch DJtronic electric fuel pump, which you can't buy anymore. So of course I told Dean, what are we going to do with all this stuff? We need a plan to smuggle it out of the wrecking yard. So our immediate plan was this. Immediately behind the wrecking yard, there was a canal. On the other side of the canal was a service road that was only open to city vehicles, but the 190 was small enough so that we could kind of drive around the gate. So I had Dean drive the car around the gate and park in back of the service road. The next thing we did was we loaded up all of the goods onto the trunk lid of the car, which I removed, and we promptly 
ushered them through the wrecking yard discreetly while we were carrying them and started slipping them through a hole in the fence. Now, I don't advise anybody to do this, but Deed could not get one of the guns through a hole in the fence, so he threw it over. <laughs> but after sitting for 30 years, it did not go off, thank God. Our next plan was getting through the canal. As you could probably imagine, you don't want to go wading waist deep in a canal in Florida because you could get bitten by just about any horrible thing from flesh-eating bacteria to a water moccasin. What we ended up doing was taking a set of contractor bags, putting them over our legs. And so we were able to put the guns and the silver and the ammunition in the 190D, along with all of the other parts that we purchased, which we didn't steal. We actually legitimately purchased the parts, but it's sort of a gray moral area. What do you do with found booty? I actually ended up consulting a friend of mine who's a Catholic priest about this, to which he responded, finders keepers. <laughs> so finally I was able to, to sort of clear my conscience of it, but we loaded everything up into the car and then we drove it to my shop. Now, Dean and I had to split the goods. And the idea was that he would keep some of the stuff and I would keep another portion of the stuff. But because Dean is from the hood and he values being able to shoot someone over being able to purchase something, he asked for the guns almost immediately. I said, here, you could have the guns. I decided that I was gonna give him one Silver Eagle and take the other 39 for myself. <laughs> we have a saying that, that I think as a Christian, a lot of people can relate to, and that is that God is just. <laughs> so maybe because I tried to screw Dean out of his, his share or because I didn't think Dean would appreciate his share, something mysteriously happened. I put the, the silver in the trunk of my 1970 Mercedes 280 SE Coupe and I locked the trunk and I said, oh, nobody saw me do this. Everything will be fine. And I hid Dean's guns in the attic of my shop because I said, there's no way that he's going to want to crawl up here and look around. It's just too hot. <laughs> but a month later, I go back to check on my silver, which I was sure nobody saw me hide and it was all gone. In the meantime, Dean managed to find the guns, took them to his apartment complex, and left the door unlocked while he was storing them in there and got them stolen from him. So the moral of the story is that there is probably a higher power in the universe somewhere that will take what you have taken if it has not been taken fairly or justly. <laughs> And now I only have a trunk lid left from the 300 SEL 4.5 and a very nice yet still unused Bosch DJ Tronic electric fuel pump. 